Thanks, everybody, for joining this session. Uh, this is going to be a panel discussion, so we welcome your questions. Uh, my name is David Boswell. I have a few questions to start with, but again, uh, we hopefully will have time to you know, take any of your questions that you have for our panelists. Uh, I'll introduce myself quickly. I am the Senior, Community Ar Senior Director of Community Architecture at Hyperledger. I also am involved with Hyperledger's Climate Action and Accounting Special Interest Group. If you're not familiar with that group, you are certainly welcome to get involved. It is an open community effort to look at how do we take the uh, blockchain technologies being developed by the community and apply them to climate-related use cases. If you go to wiki.hyperledger.org, there's a link to the Climate Action and Accounting and Special Interest Group there. Again, you're welcome to get involved. You can sign up. They have a mailing list. You can subscribe to that list, introduce yourself, and you can get notified of upcoming meetings. And one of the upcoming meetings will feature our panelist who will be speaking more about uh, the project they're involved with. That is coming up, I believe, on October 4th. Yeah. So that will be a, a virtual meeting where you can dial in from anywhere. So if you're interested in about what you're learning today and you want to learn more, please join us for that as well. Um, and with that, let me start in and introduce our panelists. We have Nancy Norris, if you want to say a word about yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Nancy Norris. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, I work for the government of British Columbia. Uh, my title is Senior Director of ESG and Digital Trust. And the ministry that I work for is Energy, Mines, and Low Carbon Innovation. And for the last two years, we've been piloting this project that we're going to be speaking to you about today. It's called the Energy and Mines Digital Trust. Great. We also have Kyle Robinson with us. Thanks. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Kyle Robinson. I'm an independent consultant uh, working f uh, on a contract right now with the provincial government. And uh, I originally started out as a scrum master uh, with the team and uh, progressed. Uh, and so now a senior strategic advisor uh, for the project. Great. Well, thank you both. Um, to start with, Nancy, can you just tell us some basics? Can you tell us about what the Energy and Mines Digital Trust Project is? Sure. So this project is a culmination of uh, two basic factors in British Columbia. So we have um, a fairly long-standing program around digital identity uh, using open source technology, and it is for individual identity. Uh, we also have very strong uh, climate legislation in BC. And so what we have done is apply this uh, digital um, identity technology for individuals, and we're piloting it at the organizational level. Uh, what we're doing is mapping, as in the use case that we're going to be talking to you about today, we are building on an existing regulatory process uh, where uh, companies, large emitters in BC, are required to submit their carbon emissions data to the government. And they're required to do so um, using verified, audited uh, reporting. So we are mapping that um, process uh, using digital credentials. Great. Kyle, can you share some more about the technology side of things? Why specifically is this project using digital trust technology for sustainability reporting? Right. So um, the big part of uh, the uh, emissions reporting uh, for that Nancy mentioned, regulatory reporting, um, we also have voluntary reporting involved in our use case, is the trust and the verification. Um, so as it stands even today with the business process for carbon emission reporting, the, um, there's an auditor uh, required to verify any emissions uh, over 25,000 uh, carbon uh, CO2e. And uh, so that is the existing process. Uh, it's written into legislation uh, that it needs to be verified. And so uh, essentially the process right now is to uh, email some PDFs around uh, that have been signed. Uh, so we're taking the existing process uh, and advancing that uh, to be used verifiable credential technology. Uh, the stack that we're using is actually um, on top of, uh, as Nancy mentioned, the organizational identities uh, that the BC government is using. So that's Hyperledger Indy and Hyperledger Aries uh, with the non-creds uh, credential types. And so uh, that's, uh, again, all around the organization and uh, identity. Um, the emissions reporting is an annual process, and that's um, one of the pieces of their identity that they can share. Great. 
And so you mentioned the government of British Columbia. Where do they see the value in here in this project? So um, the the broadly, the government of BC is interested um, and has been. Um, working quite extensively in digital identity for individuals. Uh, we see the value for um, industry in British Columbia because uh, sustainability reporting is something that has been, is more and more prevalent and we see that it is only going to continue uh, to be a demand on industries uh, within BC. BC is a natural resource rich uh, jurisdiction. So um, our mining industries and others are a big part of our economy. And we want to test out um, the use of verified credentials in this space because we think, and we've been finding over the course of this pilot that um, the use of uh, these kind of credentials can actually add business efficiencies to existing processes. Uh, for example, um, large emitters, as we've been saying, they are um, legislated to provide their emissions on an annual basis to the government. They can also use those reports um, for other type of sustainability reporting purposes, like voluntary markets or investors, potential investors that are interested in um, ESG and sustainability, or purchasers downstream who are uh, interested in their performance. Um, but at the moment, the, the processes around that are really uh, just um, what Kyle and I have found. Basically, you know, uh, doing this pilot, the processes are really uh, involved. So for big, sophisticated companies, they have whole sustainability um, departments who do this kind of reporting. For the small mines and operators, um, they are missing out on big business opportunities because it's just too um, complicated for them to have to have to have to report in all of these different ways to all of these different audiences. So if we can help design a credential that can be uh, is, is shared with others within the digital ecosystem um, and also um, bits and pieces of that information can be shared with different audiences. Uh, we see a lot of efficiency there. Um, we also think that there's, uh, you know, just for government in general, there's um, a lot of uh, opportunities to build trust um, and to, um, to work on uh, scaling and uh, interoperability of these um, technologies. And this pilot is a way for us to learn more about the technology and uh, to apply it to specific sectors. Great. To build on what you were just saying about how the current processes maybe don't work for everybody, can you speak about how digital trust frameworks improve sustainability reporting? Sure. Um, so. The improvements, I would say, are around, as I was saying before, uh, this ability to share the information in a trusted manner with multiple different audiences. Um, there's also a um, efficiency uh, um, angle in terms of um, uh, being able to um, have multiple different credentials, so not just the emissions credential that we're working on now. This is the first use case that we've really uh, been piloting, but we're also um, looking to pilot other um, use cases, such as um, the Mining Association of Canada has a towards sustainable mining protocol, which covers off not just the environmental and climate performance of mines, but also um, their work with the community, um, how they, um, uh, their, the governance of the, of the mine as well. Um, and so we want to work with them in order to create a credential that is um, a verified credential for the TSM. Um, that would improve sustainability reporting for those mines because they could then share that credential with multiple different audiences, including potentially uh, the London Metals Exchange, which is setting up a digital passport for sustainability. So um, we think that there's a lot of opportunities here um, uh, for to gain efficiency um, and also to improve and uh, open new business markets for the, for the operators within the province. 
And then going back to a te question about the technology, my understanding is you're using open source technology, but you're also creating some technology uh, as well. Can you speak about what you're developing and how does it fit in with the Hyperledger community? Uh, sure thing. So um, as mentioned, uh, we're using Indy and Aries uh, as our base stack um, for, this, uh, for this use case. Um, again, it's a self-sovereign identity model um, where the credentials uh, are informing the identity. Um, on the uh, emissions reporting, again, that's an annual one. So every year they will have a credential added to their wallet. Um, one of the things that uh, we're specifically using for, for our ARIES, for the organizations, is we're using uh, Akapai. And so we're actually looking at uh, standing up a multi-tenant uh, solution for uh, the BC government to specifically use. That will actually be um, an instance of Akapai, multi-tenant. Um, and we're building, uh, our team is specifically building a traction uh, tenant UI. Um, so on your handouts, you'll see uh, a section on there about traction. Uh, we have a GitHub repository uh, to where that code base is. Uh, it's, right now, we have a tenant UI for it, so each different division or department or program uh, in the government could use that um, a, a tenant uh, to do any of the issuing or verifying or holding that they need to do for their business practices. Um, so, and one of the partners that we're working closely with is uh, the Climate Action Secretariat. Um, and so they, in this use case, they are a verifier. Uh, they'll be uh, receiving proofs from these emission, uh, the, com the large companies that uh, do the emissions. Um, so uh, back to traction, um, there's a tenant UI and we're just about to start uh, building out uh, what we call the innkeeper UI, which is really an administrative tool for creating new tenants and assigning the keys out to those different divisions, uh, departments. Great. And when we talk about building something with blockchain, I, the topic of governance always comes up. Can you speak to the governance side of things? Like how and why are you developing governance for this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm just laughing because Kyle really leads the governance work and does an incredible job on it. Um, I, one thing common I'll just make on governance is that um, even just in the time that I've been at this conference, um, the, the point has come up that legislation in a lot of cases is starting to drive blockchain use cases. And certainly we have found that in this pilot. Um, because British Columbia's climate legislation is longstanding, um, we have the first climate or carbon tax in North America, and we have a whole suite of other uh, pieces of climate legislation that have been around for quite a while and are, are tested. And that really provides this framework for the data that is developed and is um, being fed into the, the blockchain system. Um, so we've found that if the process already exists and it's a very robust process, particularly one that's mapped out through legislation, um, that it, you can um, build upon that and apply the technology um, in a way that's uh, quite robust. Yes, that's, uh, and so uh, on the governance, it's become a very important uh, part of our project. Um, the technology is also important, uh, but we're finding that the governance is uh, maybe even more important. Um, so um, our journey there, uh, really a big shout out to Trust Over IP um, has been working with us, uh, we've been working with them on the uh, governance uh, side of um, this whole world that we're working in. And so uh, working on uh, the documentation um, uh, standards, um, what the kind of things need to have governance associated to them, all of the different pieces of an ecosystem uh, need to have uh, governance uh, risk assessment done. Uh, so those are all very important. Um, and we've been uh, working on governance documentation. Um, we're in the very, I would say early stages, but very close to having uh, actual governance uh, suite of, of documentation put together um, on uh, it's spec up is one of the actual tools that we're uh, looking at using uh, 
thanks to Stephen Curran and helping drive that forward. Um, but uh, essentially, the governance documentation location uh, is on GitHub uh, repos as well. And so that's uh, the best sort of uh, distributed, not necessarily decentralized, but at least it's distributed uh, location for governance uh, documentation. Great. <clears throat> One other question, then we'll open it up to the audience. Is there anything else you'd like to add about how you were piloting both the technology and the governance? Yeah, I would say um, another lesson that we've learned is that uh, it's, you know, there's the technology, there's the governance, but then there's also this whole process around building an ecosystem of participants, um, which is, it's been a fascinating process because um, we, you know, we have some early adopters. Uh, the pilot's been going on for a couple of years. We, we put together a, a sort of an initial team of folks from the public, private uh, sector, and NGOs. And um, it, for them, it, it was an easy step. They, they were keen, they were um, wanted to be a part of something innovative. Um, but when talking about this project to folks who aren't um, as versed in the technology, uh, maybe don't understand the benefits, um, we've realized that we have to have a whole um, team that helps with communication and change management um, to assist us when we go and talk to new stakeholders who we think would be a great um, sort of part of a use case or a, um, building out the pilots. Uh, but it, they, they, the sort of the education process to get them to a point where they're like, where they're, that sort of aha moment is for them, that this could actually, you know, really build efficiencies for them, um, create trust in their sustainability reporting that wasn't there before. Um, that has been a, a big part of, of this and continues to be a, a big part of this uh, pilot project. So there's those three sort of main components, the technology, the governance, and then the stakeholder relationships. Great, thank you. I think we have time for a few questions from the audience. Are, are people, great, let me, uh, yeah, let me take the mic down. Thanks. Uh, you're called the Energy and Mines Digital Trust. Uh, have you been thinking about any use cases to do a POC for energy side? Yes, um, so we are uh, in the process. So this was sort of our MVP use case. On the energy side, um, we are piloting or we're going to start working on um, for the natural gas uh, operators in BC. Um, the same piece of legislation, it covers, it doesn't matter what kind of um, operator you are. If you emit above a certain level, you have to report those emissions, uh, carbon emissions to the government. So we are going to be doing uh, very similarly um, an auditor. Um, in this case, it's PwC. Um, we'll probably be using a different auditor as the issuer of the credential. The holder of the credential will be the natural gas operator. And then the verifier will be um, either CAS, the, the government of BC, the Climate Action Secretariat. We're also um, just starting to develop a relationship with Expansive, which is a marketplace for digital fuels and the environmental attributes that are associated with responsibly produced um, natural gas and other types of energy. Great, thanks. Okay. Did you have anything to add? Were there, oh, there you go. Very exciting work. Uh, thanks for sharing. So uh, government don't do pilot for the sake of doing a pilot. Um, what are the exit condition to go in production and having something long live? What is success? For production. For production, yeah. OK, so also a great question. Um, on one of the panelists this morning was talking about that step from pilot to integration. And uh, Kyle and I looked at each other and went, yep, that's very true. Um, so right now for our pilots, um, each of the actors within the pilot has a wallet and is able to do the exchange. Kyle and his team have done an amazing job of deciding and helping to design the schema for the credential and making sure that it aligns with 
what's legislated, what's required through legislation. The next step, and I think this it'll be a pivotal step um, to actually going to production, is being able to integrate into the, the databases of each of those actors um, so that their system can actually populate the credential from the data uh, within their own um, IT system. And then the holder can scrape that data into their um, system and the same for the verifier of the credential. Um, we are starting to uh, think about you know, ways in which we can assist with making that happen um, for each of the, the um, actors within the existing use cases. And I think that it's going to be, um, because you know, as government, we are only one actor within this ecosystem, right? Like we're, we're incubating it because uh, we feel that um, we're in a good position to bring together public, private, um, users of the technology, um, but uh, we're only one actor within the system. So uh, we think that w uh, it's going to be at least another year or two of us being the, the drivers, I guess, of this ecosystem in order to push it past the, the pilot stage and actually get it integrated into the systems of, of each of the users. And then at a certain point, it's like any ecosystem, it's going to take on a life of its own. And at that point, you know, the governance is going to be key, you know, whether the governance documentation and systems are in place so that it can expand in a way that um, maintains that same level of trust in the data that's being shared. Yeah, sure. yeah just to add to that, um, there's, you know, sort of two main things that our team is really working on. And one of them is that a government-wide uh, service uh, for doing self-sovereign identity. And so uh, our team is working hard on getting that uh, code base ready, that the traction uh, component. Um, and then we're gonna work with um, the Ministry of Citizen Services, who will most likely host and run that in a, as a production service. Um, so, you know, we're talking with them. Um, they're very excited. John Jordan is uh, part of that. I know a lot of you know John Jordan. Uh, he wanted to be here. <laughs> um, and so that's uh, the one piece. The other piece specific to the use case is I, I like to always say that for these kinds of um, trust triangles, the value is with the verifier for the most part, okay? And so you can have a, an issuer and a holder, and if there's no verifier, then you don't have your triangle. It, it falls apart. You can, you can issue credentials to holders all day long, and if they can't present them to anybody, then there's nothing. So um, working backwards, looking at the verifier, in this case, um, the Climate Action Secretariat for the regulatory reporting, and then also uh, the voluntary reporting uh, piece with uh, Open Earth. Uh, so we're working with them. So focusing on the verifiers, uh, making sure that they are ready in you know sort of your typical IT fashion, you know doing change management, training, uh, getting the server set up, um, and again, the Climate Action Secretariat would use that service, you know, which is that government-wide uh, piece. So that's the technology piece. Um, of course, we also need to get the governance uh, pieces uh, organized. I think we have time for one or two more questions. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to ask? Any questions? If not, questions. Did, Kyle, did you have some information you wanted to share? Did you want to show I don't think so. Okay. So um, the, the other piece that I wanted to add is uh, that we are working with the climate. Uh, action and accounting special interest group um, with Hyperledger and so um, we regularly attend those sessions and uh, as David mentioned we're going to be presenting on October 4th. Um, I've also been a part of the standards uh, group and so that's been an interesting journey um, for us uh, because we you know there's the uh, stakeholders that we're having to work with the issuer the holders and the verifiers uh, but then there's also the actual credential the schema the standard itself you know, what is the data that we're moving around and what's, what standard is it? Can you use the same standard for voluntary reporting and regulatory reporting? And so we um, explored a number of ESG standards, so TCFD, um, a, a number of those kinds of things. 
And we talked to our issuer um, in our example, PricewaterhouseCoopers, to say, okay, well, what kinds of things would you be able to issue? And there's a few different things that they can actually issue. Uh, the one very specific one that we're looking at is called a verification statement, and that's the actual um, legislated piece of uh, data set that needs to be part of that emissions reporting. So our current standard, we're, we're limiting it to uh, just what's written into legislation, uh, that verification statement, but <clears throat> very easily that could be extended to use uh, to have PricewaterhouseCoopers just issue another credential to, um, in, our, in our use case, Copper Mountain Mine or one of the large emitters so that they can have an, a number of credentials issued in the same process that they could use for different processes. Are there any, oh, I see a question there. Um, you mentioned verifiers and how important verifiers in, it, in the community are. One of the things I wondered in looking at your picture here is, is are you getting much from Copper Mountain or the, the, the the producers on where else they want to use the credentials and what other value they see for where they can use them in other scenarios. Are you seeing that at all? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, the short answer is yes, uh, and um, particularly this credential. Um, the carbon accounting credential. There's, uh, from the interviews and the work that we're doing with Copper Mountain, they see um, opportunities for uh, like reputational gains uh, by being able to share this with uh, voluntary uh, reporting um, platforms. Um, also, um, you know, some of the larger uh, folks that we're working with, so tech mines. Um, they do a ton of sustainability reporting and they get a lot of requests from investors and purchasers for this kind of information. So they see value in being able to share it um, with multiple different audiences. Great. And, and just to add to that, on a, on a technical front, um, one of the things that we're also seeing is these proofs. Um, so in, in the regulatory reporting, there's an emissions report that needs to be done. Um, and it's a lot more data than is provided by that third-party verifier. That third-party verifier, um, PricewaterhouseCoopers, they verify a certain set of data. Um, and, you know, let's say it's 10 attributes. Well, they actually, Copper Mountain needs to report to the government that information as verified data, plus they need to self-report another set of data. And so there's a combination of uh, credentials to be provided in a single proof. Um, even self-attested attributes. So uh, that's one of the things we're digging into uh, now uh, that, yeah. Great. First, thanks again for the presentation. And uh, you mentioned a couple of times the importance, the relevance of trust and verifications, this might be the key issues in the development, the successful development of this e digital ecosystem. Uh, I was just wondering if you could mention which have been so far the main barriers uh, anyway in the development and implementation of the projects. Thanks. Um, yeah, thanks. I, so in terms of barriers, um, I think I would go back to um, something I said earlier, which is around uh, the education piece for stakeholders that aren't um, as, you know, they don't know as much about blockchain, they don't understand, they don't have any background with digital credentials. Um, and so being able to explain the potential benefits to them um, and also um, being able to help them to see um, what, the, what the benefits are for them specifically. So being able to articulate the benefits like as a government and as the um, leaders of the project, we have a, an understanding of what the benefits are for us, <clears throat> but also for a, a private sector business, um, for regulator, 
uh, for um, uh, like a voluntary reporting platform. Um, the being able to articulate those benefits for each of those different types of actors has been uh, a really important um, way of, of making the bringing the pilot forward. Yeah, just to add to that, the one thing that comes to mind uh, with your question around trust is um, actually looking at the uh, trust registry uh, mechanism that uh, like Climate Action Secretariat would need to um, have a set of trusted issuers. So actually in legislation, it's, uh, it's set out what the actual issuer needs to have as far as, I can't remember the actual accreditation, but the, the verifier needs, but um, that presumably could be uh, put into a trust registry. And so uh, that also speaks back to the governance uh, work that we're working on and how that is going to be documented, uh, the actual trust registry location. Uh, we've also been having uh, great conversations with Indicio um, on the actual um, uh, machine readable governance uh, files that would be associated uh, with the human readable governance files so that you could have a list of DIDs uh, for your issuers, let's say. Do you already have a proven value in terms of how much more efficient this kind of reporting is compared to the SS or old kind of reporting? Um, I would say um, we've, we have anecdotal uh, evidence, you know, from all of the different folks that are in this use case. Uh, when we talk to them about what we're doing and, and um, have them participate, they they say, oh, oh yeah, okay, we can see how this would be more efficient. We can see how this would actually expand our opportunities to reach different markets. Um, but this is a pilot, so we are learning. And um, I think that the, the long-term benefits will really hinge on adoption and um, uh, you know, the whole uh, next step around integrating and also the benefits around um, the scale of the ecosystem. Because if there's only three actors within um, the ecosystem, that is not, that's not gonna be of benefit. Uh, you have to have a much broader adoption. Um, so I, I think that the scalability factor is, uh, is a really important one. And it also sort of speaks back to the idea of having um, good communications. You know, we have a, a team of um, folks who, who work on communications for us, uh, produced the, the pamphlet that's in front of you. Uh, that's a been a really important factor for this pilot and I think uh, will continue to be, to be important. So in the area where you're working energy and mines, um, clearly it sounds like compliance, regulatory compliance is a major uh, factor. How are you finding the regulators reacting to what's their interest or, or level of acceptance of this new way of, of uh, or new form of reg tech? Um, so, I. Uh, the, in terms of regulators, the Climate Action Secretariat is is a regulator. Uh, they have a regulatory duty to, um, you know, annually have these emissions reports. Um, I would say that they're um, they're very. It's very important to them that we get the language correct. Um, it's very important that we. Um, make sure that we're not uh, talking about this project in a way, that, or misrepresenting what we're doing. Like this is not, uh, what we're doing within this pilot isn't a replacement for the existing regulatory process. It could build on that um, and maybe be one way of down the road of um, the information being accepted by the Climate Action Secretariat, but that's, 
that's down the road. That's a, a future thing. So I think um, an important factor uh, is, is being able to take bite-sized chunks. Um, you know, being able to show that uh, if you come along on this journey with us, uh, that uh, it's not, um, you're not sort of signing on that you're going to be doing it. You know, that you're not impinging on a regulatory process, uh, but you are willing to explore that possibility down the road. And just being able to really cl clearly articulate that to a regulator and um, also showing them that, uh, you know, when you talk to them about their existing processes and their existing regulation, that that is then reflected back to them in the work that you produce. Um, I think that that um, has helped us gain trust, uh, that, that we are, uh, we're doing what we're, we said we were doing and no more. Um, and I think that that's going to be a really important factor in um, making sure that, or having them continue to work with us on the pilot. Um, to wrap up, I had one other question. I mean, you mentioned about all the learning that you're doing in the pilot. If there's anybody in the audience here or watching remotely who is thinking about adopting blockchain for a climate-related use case, is there any guidance that you would give them? Is there anything that you would learn that you would think would apply to other similar related projects? Uh, so what I would suggest for the, the climate-related uh, stuff is actually um, uh, attend the Climate Action and Accounting SIG uh, working group sessions, um, or the special interest group sessions. Um, we meet every two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what you'll see in that uh, special interest group is not just Indian Aries uh, solutions for your carbon accounting use cases, uh, but Fabric and other Hyperledger uh, type of solutions, but all in that realm of carbon accounting. Um, so that, that's a great place where I would suggest starting, uh, but certainly you can reach out to us or uh, David. Um, yeah. Great. Anything you want to share, Nancy? Or? I think that's great. 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 Well, I think we're right at time. Uh, um, we may have time for one more question if there is one. Great. Well, I think we uh, uh, are at time, so thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Nancy.